Call of Duty Eminem and M, or just MW3. Today we're going to be talking about Modern Warfare 2023's MW3 reboot. <laughs> oh god. Oh my guys, this is what we call a nostalgia trap, but it is what it is, so whatever. Anyways, hello everybody, my name is Matsuki, here to deliver y'all a new top 10 list for today's video. MW3, or Modern Warfare 2023, the COD releasing later this year, was originally planned to be some sort of DLC sequel for Modern Warfare 2022's COD, aka the MW2 reboot, but apparently the project got large enough so that they have fully transformed it into its own new game. So taking into account that this COD is supposed to be pretty much an improved MW2, my top 10 list is going to be focusing on a couple core values. Number 1, obviously, how can they improve Modern Warfare 2? Number 2, how can they pay some respect to the beloved MW3, you know since this game is sharing the same name as the original? And number 3, what possible innovations could be made? to perhaps differentiate this game from MW2, the COD we're gonna have just played the previous year. Like, I don't want MW3 to feel like a DLC, I want it to stand out too. Now that you guys, my audience, can see my goals I'll try to achieve listed out, please feel free to rate my top 10 list in the comments below, and the order I put everything in as well, because I'm gonna try to start with the stuff I want least, and then I'll get into the things I want more further down the list. And tell me your own top 10 in the comments too, let's have some fun, bon appetit, enjoy! Number 10, I want to see not a few, not half, but every single base game OG MW2 map remade for this COD MW 2023 game at launch. No exceptions. I think it'll be very important to get this right for the people that were sold on MW2 nostalgia for Modern Warfare 2022. Why? Well, because the developers have still not delivered us a single OG MW2 map in Modern Warfare 2022, despite literally advertising that game with those maps found within the Battle Royale mode. They have already brought quite a few Warzone POIs over to multiplayer, but none of them have been OG MW2 maps for some reason. And I think we can all guess what that reason is now, huh? They knew COD 2023 was being made by Sledgehammer games while on crunch time. Sledgehammer just finished making Vanguard last year and now they're making MW3. With how worrying that sounds, I bet they needed some leverage on the COD player base. And OG maps sold MW 2022 very well, so why wouldn't they do it again? <laughs> yeah, sure they legally didn't say those maps were gonna be in MW 2022, but it was pretty obvious they were showing them off as if they were supposed to be within that COD Next event last summer. Welcome to Al Mazra. Look at the size of that thing! Uh, okay, so that was a big picture, and it's a great way to see it from a sort of top-down layout, but uh, let's take a better look at some of these points of interest. And if you're paying attention, you might even see a few that seem pretty familiar out there as well. So we have in this one... Uh, Ooh! That looks oh, familiar. That seem familiar. <laughs> I, I think so they're gonna drop to observatory just to go go back to home, you know? Go yeah. <laughs> they're it, coming home. It's always nice you're moving through the map and you kinda hit a spot and you're like, wait a I've second. been here before. I know what this this. Is. <laughs> <laughs> of all these flashbacks. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of nuggets in there for some old uh modern for that warfare reason, fans. Yeah, I'll say Corey. I think yeah. that's gonna, gonna <laughs> pop off. I'd also love to point out how there's just a ton of POIs they showed off in this event that ended up being ported over to multiplayer now. Some of these areas are battle maps, some are ground door. An invasion, I've noticed some are 12v12 S and D maps, and lots are 6v6 maps already in multiplayer as of season 4. Only ones left at this point seem to be the OG MW2 maps, and the replayable live chat is absolutely going wild around them. I'd uh, hate to break it to them now, but they baited the hell out of those people. It's a real shame, so I'd like at least something to make up for that disappointment. Recreating all OG MW2 maps in my pain for launch is the way to go. Anyways, let's jump into number 9. Do you guys recall that one leak around MW2 and MW3 getting a combined remastered multiplayer? Well, I would love to see that happen with Modern Warfare 2023. Imagine this. After we get all 16 or so OG MW2 maps at launch, we start getting 3 OG MW3 maps every season. If we got 5 seasons with 3 maps each, that equates to 15 maps by the end of the life cycle. What better way to make COD's 20th anniversary about the classic fan favorite games remade into one. It's the perfect storm, dude. And I'd be a bit disappointed if they didn't bring back any MW3 maps when the name of the game is MW3. <laughs> I grew up with the OG MW3. It was my very first ever experience with COD, and it was the first COD I ever bought for myself. So, here's the hoping they pay some type of homage to the game deserving of it. Number 8. Another map wish. <laughs> 
I want to see Modern Warfare 2022 maps transferred over to Modern Warfare 2023. Call of Duty themselves already announced that they're bringing back all cosmetics over from MW2's reboot into the new MW3, but that doesn't really have me hyped. They're just cosmetics, of which most I don't own. <laughs> I couldn't care less. But if you bring the Modern Warfare 2022 maps over into MW 2023, oh man. Now there, I could see some potential. If those maps are transferred over, I won't get burned out as fast. There's also an incentive to own both MW2 and MW3 at that point. Plus, during the life cycle, they wouldn't have to recreate as many OG MW3 maps when they already got Dome in the game. Isn't that great? That's uh, one off the list. Check, check. Also, the reason I have this at my number 8 spot above giving us OG MW2 and OG MW3 maps is because I think it matters more on the quantity of content rather than the style of content in 6v6 multiplayer. I would still be happy if they added completely brand new maps to MW3, but I'm saying right now they don't have to. I would like to see an MW game that pays complete homage to the original games that have uh, been rendered unplayable due to hackers, doxers, and whatever. Sledgehammer games. Promise us that you'll deliver the best experience possible, please. And while you're at it, make shipment a 2v2 gunfight and 4v4 face-off map only. Get that shiz away from 6v6 and into a mode that complements it. Like, it is time to stop. If we get another shipment, I don't even know what I'll say, man. I'll just be deeply disappointed. Number seven, here we got a cosmetic filter. Yeah, yeah, I know it's pretty insane of me to put this above something like transferring maps between games, but hear me out, hear me out. COD is lacking so much identity lately, and I'd like them to make this filter sooner rather than later. Think about the future. Do we want Black Ops Gulf War, Black Ops 5, or Infinite Warfare 2 to have all these modern 2022 and 2023 skins running around in those eras too? When does the bastardization stop? Not to mention, I think it's very ballsy for Sledgehammer Games to allow MW 2022 skins to transfer over in the first place? I was gonna make a video on why I don't think skins will ever transfer over to other COD 6v6 multiplayer, but here's the TLDR of that video. <laughs> When a game comes out, your skins reset. However, every single year, they launch their CODs with skins that match the theme. Then those skins slowly but surely devolve into more wacky, insane skins with higher rarities and prices. They have purposefully been doing this to create a level of progression for your real life wallet. People feel like they're more inclined, more incentivized to buy a better skin to keep up with the evolving COD community in game. So now that they aren't doing this tactic for Modern Warfare 3, I do wonder what's gonna happen. I wonder if people will spend less on that game's microtransactions because they already own the top echelon of skins in MW 2022. Only time will tell, but hey, I think a cosmetic filter would still be nice to have. Most Battle Pass skins every season are still Milsim themed too, so I'm just saying, they could still advertise skins to the crowd looking for a traditional COD visual experience. COD has and always will be an arcade shooter with military visuals at its roots, and I would love it to stay that way. It's exactly what I fell in love with back on the OG MW you three when I was in grade eight. But yeah, anyway. Number six. I said this thing all the way back between MW2's beta and MW2's launch day, and I believe we still need Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer Games to make a decision. The compass and minimap system, as it stands now, feels weak. To be fair, this is somewhat due to the garbage perk system in MW2. I think there's some simple fixes like just allowing all perks to work off the bat instead of waiting on a timer to count down, but hey, I'm not a stubborn lead developer at these studios, but <laughs> what do I know? It's honestly the simplest and easiest fix they could do. There's literally no excuse. They are able to alter the timers with just the press of a button. We've seen them do this between the beta weekends, less than a week apart. So don't deny how simple this fix is, we already know firsthand. For Modern Warfare 2023 though, hey, I would almost take any other perk system from COD's past at this point. I know the devs got some time to design a perk system from the ground up for the new COD, so I'm also just gonna go on a limb and recommend Ghost's cleverly designed perk system, minus this uh, bottom row of randomized perks. They just don't involve skill, they're luck based. And if you guys want an entirely new perk system for Modern Warfare 3, I would recommend watching my perk overhaul video I released back in December of 2022. Enjoy! And yes, I did hear some leaks two or three weeks ago around the new perk system for Modern Warfare 3. Apparently there's gonna be these different pieces of armor for different perk categories. You got your standard helmet, vest, gloves, and what have you. But also, Call of Duty themselves on Twitter have confirmed how cosmetics are transferring over from MW2 into MW3, including skins. So I doubt this new leaked perk system is actually gonna add armor over top of your character. I think it's gonna be more like Ghost Recon Breakpoint where you can override your character's visuals and keep your whole armor stats separate 
separate. But yeah, I think this whole perk system would actually work well with ghost style system too. For example, the gloves could be for the agility perks, a vest could be your defensive perks, pants could be for stealth, boots could affect your movement and footstep volume, and so on. This sort of system also reminds me of the one Gamer Central and Boom brainstormed a while back on one of their streams. I hope they are pretty happy with this leak in particular, and perhaps with MW3 you can build a new blank slate character from the ground up. You know, kind of like breakpoint operators without the override feature turned on? This way you'd be able to see the perks directly correspond with the gear they are linked with. So, number five, here is a juicy one. You guys recall how DMZ had these things called factions? They're essentially different guns for hire that have their own missions for you to complete. You could almost call them the modern day equivalent of the mission teams, eh? eh? Yeah, I'm referencing mission teams from Infinite Warfare. Hell yeah, best COD for a reason. <laughs> we'll make a video on it one day, lads. But hey, add those mission teams to MW3's multiplayer and you got one of the most replayable CODs ever. What are mission teams, Matsuki? Well, Sonny, mission teams entail players choosing one of three missions to complete per match. If you don't complete a mission, they'll cycle over to a new mission. Completing a mission successfully mid-match will upgrade the tier of that mission and every tier will grant you higher rewards. Rewards entail XP for your faction. You level that sucker up and you get other exclusive rewards that are worthwhile. Mission teams themselves are also divided up into different scales of difficulties, just like the factions in DMZ. And they give you more plentiful rewards based on how hard your faction is too. Lots of cool stuff. I really hope they don't remain exclusive to Infinite Warfare and DMZ. I'd love them to return to multiplayer with endless challenges, charming immersive announcers, and good grindable loot. Cheers! Moving on, number four. We're getting into some more gameplay related changes here on out, guys. I would really want a sliding overhaul. I love that MW2 has this whole optional sliding versus dolphin diving system. That can and should stay. They coexist within the same game and that's just cool to me. But what isn't cool is how useless and dumb sliding currently is, even with the season five buff. And I don't think there's any excuses when it comes to making players more super soldiery when sliding. We also got higher field of views now, so it's pretty hard for someone to vanish off your screen by performing a super slide. <laughs> My ideal sliding buff for Modern Warfare 3 involves letting players shoot their gun while sliding, also increasing the speed and smoothness, flow, and strength of the slide to pretty much match the sliding from Black Ops Cold War or Infinite Warfare. I did make this tier list before Season 5 came out, so I will say that they did kinda meet the requirement for the speed, so that's good. And I also think that if you are attack sprinting and then decide to slide, your slide should be longer, but your slide to firing your weapon speed should be delayed a little bit longer too, just for balancing sake. Think of it something like this. If you want a super slide, it's gonna cost you your offensive capabilities. Number three, improved stim shots. Cold War's eight second rechargeable stims from the beta were absolutely perfect. Perfection. I'm really sad that they nerfed them from 8 seconds to 12 for launch. It slowed down the gameplay a little and that just kind of sucked. But hey, they're still better than Modern Warfare 2's current stim shots. Modern Warfare 2's have limited uses as well. They aren't even worth using. I would much rather use the quick fix perk if it wasn't on an unlock timer, mind you. <laughs> God. But yeah, Modern Warfare 3 should definitely get some 8 to 10 second rechargeable stims that are faster to use and pretty much speed up the gameplay on every single map. Not to mention how good stim shots remove a lot of nade spam because lots of people agree that the potential stims offer is better than getting one cheap tactical nade kill per life with say a blinding white flashbang or a stun that renders you completely frozen and still. Stim shots are just way more engaging. Number two, we're getting mighty close to the end of my list. Isn't this thrilling? Oh my God, you guys are gonna love this. I want to see an increased health for core multiplayer. This current system is just silly. You cannot react to someone that hits headshots at all, and it just makes for very uninteresting gameplay. Cold War really nailed it when it came to the time to kill with the assault rifles and SMGs for the most part at launch. If you're also an older player like me, I'd love to see something closer to Infinite Warfare's time to kill. Yeah, I can't believe I said that either. <laughs> Infinite Warfare is starting to really become a COD that people will probably forget in the upcoming years, if not already. But yeah, give us something like 250 milliseconds for a time to kill and it is perfect. As long as I'm not instantly dying to red guns, I am good. I know it's not going to be an easy fix for Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer games since MW2 weapons are transferring over to MW3, so it's not going to be built from the ground up, but at the very least I'd like to see a return to the overclocked mode from Vanguard as a staple mode. That mode was just a separate mosh pit. The health was 
was increased and I liked it a lot. And it's way, way more fudging deserving than that hardcore and tier one mode. Those two modes are already very close to the core time to kill, so give us something different, please. I'd like to have more skill in my games, more back and forth action. Just don't do an overcorrection. I don't want the time to kill to be like BO4's. BO4 time to kill was too long and it leads to double teaming and camping at head glitches. Alright, so, the number one spot you've all been waiting for. I've pretty much said everything that you've had on your top 10 lists, right? Well, I will throw you a curveball and point you to the Season 5 Battle Pass of Modern Warfare 2. You see this black cell? You see the design? Yeah, that's an Infinite Warfare combat rig in Modern Warfare 2022. You know what I want for my number one spot? It's not a cosmetic filter, we already had that at number 7 on my list. I don't want power sliding at my number 1 spot, that was my number 4 wish. I would like a game mode. A simply fun mode for players like myself that miss the good old era of jetpacks. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about a permanent jetpack mosh pit. It's at my number 1 spot because I just need another jetpack cod, man. It's been so long, almost 7 years. That's like 3 years off of a decade. That's insane. I can't believe it. We've had nearly 6 years of straight boots on the ground, which is double the amount of jetpack cods, but not one single game between there has returned us to that era, not even a mosh pit. Like guys, Infinite Warfare, great game. It actually accommodated the boots on ground enjoyers with its own tactical mosh pit. Redesigning the game for traditional cod gameplay. Do that again, but for jetpacks. I would adore something like this. I heard that Season 5 of Modern Warfare 2 is doing something like this with a low gravity mode. It's called Havoc because I have not played it. But also it just sounds to me like a pre-Season 5. Boring sloggy jump system similar to Warzone's with some way too overpowered abilities mixed in that aren't specialists. They're like passive abilities that act as perks and they don't go away once unlocked. Do you want to just ruin slam the ground every time you land? Yeah, that's one of them. I miss the more balanced active abilities that aren't spammable, you know? I just kind of dread this upcoming mode, but hey, I'll save that for my Season 5 community review. Also, I know this mode is nothing like OG MW3, but I gotta say, think of this jetpack mosh pit more as a staple party mode. It's just for fun, especially if you got an elite controller with back buttons and paddles, or you just play on mouse and keyboard. I quite enjoyed and dearly missed the jetpack era of COD, so hopefully it can return in some sort of way. And that's it! If you guys enjoyed, please smash the like button as it does help out the channel a lot. I'll also give you guys a quick rundown of my top 10 so you guys can rate it in the comments now too, and criticize or agree with the preferences I've laid upon thee. Number 1, Jetpack Mosh Pit, similar to how Hardcore is a mosh pit itself. Number 2, Overclocked Mosh Pit, also similar to Hardcore but longer time to kill instead of an instant deletus the fleetest time to kill. <laughs> Number 3, Better Rechargeable Stim Shots. Number 4, Better, More Useful Sliding. Number 15, sorry, number 5, <laughs> Mission Teams in Multiplayer. Number 6, A Compass Buff. Number 6, Seven, a cosmetic filter that only affects your own visuals and preserves the theme of the game and future CODs going forward. Number 8. All Modern Warfare 2 maps transfer over to MW3. Mine is shipment. <laughs> Number 9. Modern Warfare 3's DLC includes all base OG MW3 maps. And lastly, number 10. Modern Warfare 3 should release with all OG MW2 maps on day 1. No excuses. They should have been in Modern Warfare 2 and they just weren't. Just give them to us now. No more more waiting, please. I hope you guys enjoyed the list, it was pretty fun to make. Gravity recommended the idea, so thanks man, shout out to you. I also recommend anyone else to make their lists in the comments below or in video format on your own channels. If you guys do make some videos, I'll try to link them in a pinned comment in this video. So yeah, like DM me or something on Twitter if you guys have made your own top 10 wish lists for MW3. I'd also in general love to watch them and see what kind of preferences and interests you guys have in COD. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out homies. Also, just lastly, biggest thank you to Coffee Lover Joel for that huge donation. Like, you really didn't have to. You really made my day, and I hope this video was worth your time. So, again, like, thank you so much. <laughs> Peace out, homies.